Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the subcommittee. On July 4th, 2023, Independence Day, Judge Terry A. Doty of the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Louisiana entered a historic injunction against the White House and other federal officials. This injunction prevents them from, quote, urging, encouraging, pressuring, or inducing in any manner the removal, deletion, suppression, or reduction of content containing protected free speech posted on social media platforms. Judge Doty's opinion contains 82 pages of detailed factual findings supported by 577 citations of the evidence, which is drawn from roughly 20,000 pages of the federal government's own emails and communications with social media platforms and six full-length depositions. In its recently filed stay motions, the government has hardly bothered to dispute any of these factual findings. The Court of Appeals has entered a, quote, temporary administrative stay of this injunction and granted expedited argument, briefing and argument on August 10th. Contrary to some recent suggestions, a temporary administrative stay is, quote, routine practice in the Fifth Circuit. That's a direct quote from their recent decision in N. Ray Abbott and it does not reflect any judgment of the merits. Today, I want to offer seven observations drawn from the Louisiana opinion. First, the Louisiana court found, based on overwhelming evidence, that federal officials are the cause of the censorship of the viewpoints they disfavor. The government likes to claim that social media platforms acting on their own would apply their policies and censor all this content anyway, this is demonstrably incorrect. Again and again, the Louisiana court found that the platforms would not have suppressed this speech but for the fact that the federal officials were pushing for it. The deplatforming of Alex Berenson, the throttling of Tucker Carlson's content, the silencing of the so-called disinformation dozen, which includes Mr. Kennedy, uh, the suppression of much of the so-called borderline, which is, quote, often true content on Facebook's platforms, the censorship of the Hunter Biden laptop story, and much more. All these were suppressed because of the efforts of federal officials. Second, the scope and reach of federal censorship is staggering. As the Louisiana court repeatedly found, it affects, quotes, millions of social media posts and speakers all across America. It affects virtually every American who reads, listens, engages, or posts on social media about great disputed political and social questions that federal censors have stuck their fingers into. Third, federal censorship is ongoing and it shows no signs of relenting. Federal officials' censorship efforts are in full swing, and they're expanding to new frontiers. Left unchecked, federal censorship will reach virtually any disputed social and political question over which federal officials want to impose their power. Fourth, the Louisiana opinion shows that federal officials are most eager, most focused on, focused on silencing truthful speech and to muzzle the most influential critics of the administration and its policies. Tucker Carlson, Alex Berenson, and many others were targeted not because what they were saying was necessarily false, but because it was the most effective criticism of the narrative line that the administration was pushing at the time. Censorship is not about truth. It is about power, preserving and expanding the power of the censors and the political narratives they prefer. Fifth, federal officials are deeply intertwined with what other witnesses have called the censorship industrial complex. The Louisiana court made very detailed findings about the close connections between many federal officials and that mass surveillance and mass censorship enterprise that calls itself the Election Integrity Partnership and the Virality Project. <clears throat> Not just CISA officials, but White House, State Department, and Surgeon General officials have deep ties to that enterprise. As the Louisiana court found, CISA and the EIP were completely intertwined. Sixth, Federal officials don't just dictate the outcomes of specific content moderation decisions. They also directly induce changes to the content moderation policies, policies of major social media platforms to ban disfavored viewpoints in advance. And seventh, 
the federal censorship enterprise has succeeded in transforming online discourse by rendering entire viewpoints virtually unspeakable on social media, which is the modern public square. This ongoing distortion of the most fundamental American freedom, the right to free speech, is intolerable under the First Amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sauer.